All right, thank you. Oh, yay. Yay, it's just me and you. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> we get the room to ourselves. How cool. This would be really good to be intimate. Okay, and then, all right, we're done. We're going to talk now. <laughs> How cute is this? Okay. All right. Christina Million in the house. What's everyone. up? Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Svenja. I'm so excited to be here with you. Me too. I'm happy to be here with you. Right? Yeah. So I was growing up with your music. <laughs> So I'm a fan girl. Thank you. Day one. <laughs> Thank you. You've been really cool, you know, since the day that I met you, and then like we did our first photo shoot together. Yeah. I thought it was really cool that you presented, you know, the idea of infusing my music history along with the photo shoot, and so it was proof that you do like you had a CD. By the way, <laughs> she brought a CD. I don't know whose it was, but I don't know if you bought it off eBay. But you had a no, CD. No, 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 that was mine. It was when yours? When you look at me. <laughs> she had the when you look at me CD and everything. I haven't seen that in a second. So that's proof to what you said. Yeah, you, yeah. It's not a lie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I wanted to start with that topic, like how we met. Because uh, we met during Fashion Week, which is also right now in yeah. Paris. And we met at the La Croix Smith um, yeah. dinner party. Like the, yeah, dinner party. Yeah. And I usually don't drink that much, but we had some shots and it was a fun night. I have some fun videos as well. Yeah. And, you know, that was probably one of my first Fashion Week events that I'd been to in really? Paris. Because I really don't really seek to go out to a lot of the Fashion Week yeah. events because... You know, when you're here, you kind of you see fashion everywhere. And then I kind of had this stigma in my mind. I'm just like scared that, you know, going out to anything fashion related is going to feel like when you watch like Emily in Paris, you know, like <laughs> you are not welcome. No one's paying attention to you. Yeah. Like you feel like a total dud, like if you don't know anybody. And um, it, quite frankly, it was actually the opposite. You know, I got there. I actually came with a friend of mine who's in fashion, but not here in Paris. And so I had this comfort level. I love Laquan Smith. And so I already yeah. have like a history with him. That's why I decided to go to that one. I was like, nice. I know Laquan. I've worn his work. Like, I feel like I, I go there. I'll be welcome. And um, we actually had so much fun. That was like my, exactly. for the first time, I was like, okay, this isn't bad. I could do this again. I could do it again. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It was also my first fashion week. Really? Yeah. So I love that we, you know, had Look like the us. first fashion week together. <laughs> And a couple shots just to kind of loosen us up. <laughs> I was feeling so bad yeah. the whole night. No. Oh, well. um, yeah, and we no. became, like, we got cool. Like, the next, she, you took some really cool shots of us, me yeah, and my friends, yeah, yeah. amongst just, like, all of us. I love, I love candid, just, like, in the moment, living life kind of exactly. shots. And I remember seeing some of the pictures the next day. And we, did we exchange information that night? Or was yeah, it, like, yeah, DM on, or something like that? On Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Yes. That's so easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's where we, uh. That's where we started. Exactly. So that was the first night. Then we did a photo shoot, which you already mentioned. We did. Um, so we which you did a fantastic four... job with that. Thank you so much. It was dope. We did four different looks. Um, mm -hmm. How would you rank them? What was your, your favorite look? Oh, ooh, I'll tell you. I could tell you easy. Okay. <laughs> cowboy hat, girl. The cowboy hat. We had one cowboy look with like the jeans. Yes, and there one... was one with the like big coat and then there was one with the jeans. So I'm going to go first with the jeans. Yeah. It kind of gave me like an essence. It felt like an ode to like my earlier days. You know, I felt yes. like it was like me 20 years ago. I felt sexy, chic, <laughs> um, relaxed. I felt really confident. And what I loved about it, I had just had my baby maybe like at that same year. Oh, wow. And so I was really kind of like feeling exhausted in that time. And it was nice to kind of like get back into doing a photo shoot, feel like myself again. Yeah. And yeah, you really yeah, presented yeah. Me, that to me within that shoot. So um, that was my favorite. That's like that really yes. stood out to me. I was really working out a lot before we did that shoot. <laughs> I, love I was. That. The preparation. I always do that every time. <laughs> every time there's an event, a photo shoot, a music video, I'm like, the preparation is real. Yes. Um, second to that one would be the other cowboy hat with yeah, the with yeah. the coat also and um, and also with the saddle. The saddle kind of yeah. came with the first with look, the, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So saddle, 
girl in power, you know, and you got to ride the bull, you know? Yes. Um, <laughs> then the second, oh, 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 I forgot. Then there's there was the this black one ponytail. With the, ponytail. Exactly. the ponytail is sick. And I love what you did with that. Oh, sorry, microphone. Um, I love what you did afterwards in post. Yeah. You did some yeah. really cool effects. You showed me some ideas. You're like, I'm going to have you standing on top of your own tongue. I'm going to have you <laughs> handing in your, you know, you're going to be standing in your own hand. And we're going to like, we're going to make this giant, just super long. Long, it was a Sandra, I think Sandra did my yes, hair, yeah. a super long ponytail. Um, and I mean, everybody came through, they did their job. Yeah, they shout all, out to the whole team. Shout out did the team. I've amazing. actually stayed in touch with many of them as well. I've even booked Sandra and yeah. a couple, couple yeah. of different people for different things now. Um, and uh, yeah, that was dope. And then, of course, yes. lastly, it would be the burgundy coat. It's kind of giving Matrix. Yes. Um, so that one was more fantasy. I mean, they're all fantasy. But it was a little bit different, and it was fun because that was like going back to, you know, with the CD, and I like the moment that we made the, the reels. Yeah. So that was yeah. cool. That's my Amazing. Honor. Yeah, and after that, we went to a couple of fashion shows together. Yeah. We celebrated your birthday. Yeah. Uh, recently, just like... Two, three days ago, we went to the Vogue World yes. dinner, which was amazing. we went to amazing. the Vogue World dinner for Casa del Sol and what's her, and um, Eva Longoria yes. um, in Montmartre. It was very romantic and sexy and so yeah. much fun, actually. Uh, Eva, she's such a she's such a good host. Yeah, oh my god, um, the she's food, so <laughs> easy drinks. to get along with. The food, the drinks, she made us drinks, cocktails the whole time. She's yeah. been, she's really good at making cocktails. Also a really good chef, by the way. Just I'm sure if you you guys know that. And um, <laughs> no, she really is. And uh, and she, and yeah, she I've, every time I like introduce her to a new friend, I feel like everybody feels so in, like instantly welcome. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we spent the whole night drinking and talking and laughing. Yes. You took some really fun. great pictures. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love them. Oh, yeah. The red and then your outfit. Together. Yeah. Yeah. So it nice. worked out perfect. And what's crazy is before I left for that event, I had a whole different outfit on. When yeah. you came to my house, like five yeah. minutes before, I had yeah. changed everything from the hair, the outfit. Luckily, the makeup went, but um, it was one of those things. I was like, no, that's for the Vogue 100, Vogue World. You have to wear that to that How red was carpet. The event? It was really nice. Yes. It was beautiful. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow, what a production. Mm -hmm. Social so media many is full stars. of all stars. Oh, so many stars. Everywhere you look, there was a star. Um and I can just imagine the amount of choreography and how much rehearsals they had to do to get that right. And, the, you know, it's a once in a lifetime experience. They shut down Place Vendome. Yeah. And that's, I don't know if that's ever happened. I think that's the first time. No, I think they do it like yeah. every now and then. Once, if yeah. the event is big enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, this was a yeah. big one. Yeah. And it was the one. And it was good. It was really good. I had, yeah. had me and Eva, again, we were sitting together yeah. and we were just <laughs> kicking and laughing the whole time. We're, kind of loud <laughs> we're loud we're sitting next to Maluma and you just know the Latinos are around because the Latinos like you will be talking you just keep talking yeah. and yeah. telling our, yeah. like we gotta yeah. catch up so <laughs> we're catching up and watching and rooting for everybody and seeing our friends like whoa Getting them out of character. We're like, we're not trying to get them out of character, but we're so happy for them. Like, we celebrate people. And, you know, it's cool that Eva's the same way. I'm, I've always been that way as well. So how did your career start? Like, when we go Ooh. back to the very beginnings. <laughs> like, how did you get, like, discovered? Me? Yes. Yes, you. <laughs> uh, wow, discovered. Well, the beginnings of my career are so early. I actually started as a child. Mm -hmm. And I I guess I would like to say, in a way, I discovered myself and by saying that I knew that I wanted this. I discovered that I had this passion for, yeah. for performing, for entertaining, and just wanting to be something or someone that people knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, through that, you know, your parents, obviously, every, every parent, you see your kid and you see different things in them. But um, I think through, you know, the times that I grew up, I had Michael Jackson, Madonna, I had people like Janet Jackson, Diana Ross, even all those people were still such strong influences. And there was a time in that time, there was such a mystique to the celebrities, mm -hmm. whether, even actors, Demi oh, Moore, yeah. um, all the models, the supermodels, yeah. Naomi Campbell, like you saw these people 
on TV. Exactly. You did not see them every day. And they that's so different now. Yeah, right? it's so through different now. Media. Now through social media, you know their life. They share their life. You, The world is smaller. We travel more. We see people yeah. everywhere now. Um, and back then, you know, people didn't travel as often. You know, you might have traveled to Disneyland or something. Like, yeah. I went to New York and I saw, you know, <laughs> Times Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. that was the celebrity. I went to Planet <laughs> Hollywood and that's where Demi Moore and Bruce Willis and those people were. But... You know, it still felt it felt like you were part, you touched them somehow. They were at the same restaurant, um, and yeah. So having those people, like you, I like I would go to sleep and I would dream about this. Mm-hmm. I, I would dream about being on a stage and performing, and um, I dream about just I watch TV and I when I was little I tried to get inside of the television. That's how bad it was. I, my mom t- saw me. <laughs> And I believe this and I know yeah, this yeah. with a screwdriver trying to get in the TV. I literally <laughs> was trying to jump into magazines and magazines on the table. And I was trying to jump into the magazine. No way. It was that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm that crazy. I'm loco. So or loca. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> so when funny. your fa- parents are seeing you do that and you're saying you want this so bad, they're like, OK, well, then we'll get you vocal lessons or you want to take some dance some tap classes and you know I t- take a couple little things locally I grew up in Maryland yeah it's not really there's no real like like place it's not Hollywood and so you just take little classes here and there yeah. piano lessons piano lessons led to vocal lessons um eventually you know you you find in the magazine like you know, the newspaper that there's a place called John Casablanca where you can learn how to walk the catwalk and you pay them and you take headshots and they teach you how to walk like a model and yes I'm not a model but <laughs> you couldn't tell me that at that moment I was dressed up and you know it's 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 a cool experience to make you feel like you're a star and uh eventually you meet agents like people do like local agents find yeah. out like where are the kid actors yeah I even did pageants. I did a bunch of stuff. And so I finally, my parents got me an agent around like seven, eight wow. years old. That's, I wanted so you, it. It was more acting in the beginning? More acting yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. And um, for like a whole year, they would drive me to auditions in Washington, D.C., as well as in New York. And I did not book wow. one audition. One yeah. year of constant like yeah. driving back and forth and back and forth. Didn't book an audition, but I actually felt like I got the job. Mm-hmm. So I never felt like if I didn't get the job, like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. I'm the worst. No, I felt like going to an audition was exciting. It felt like a job. And I understood that if I didn't necessarily get it, I just wasn't the right fit. But one year after that, my parents are like, okay, this is costing us a lot of money. (laughs) This is a lot of fuel, a lot of gas. Tina, if you don't, you know, if you don't book anything, then, you know, we're going to have to take a break. So I took a break for about a year and then I just wanted it so bad. I begged them and begged them and begged them again. Got an agent locally. My first audition I went to, I got the job. Amazing. Yay. But what, like, what was an like amazing mindset point. you had, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, oh, like, I didn't get the job, but But it still, still felt like I did the job. It felt right? so good. It felt good. That's it was key like, to it was success, though. Yeah, because <laughs> it was like, it was towards my goal. I was heading towards my goal. And I didn't know any better. I was so yeah. young, too. Yeah. So my parents, they, they also just fed me a lot of, like, positive you know, positive information and yeah. affirmations, they call it now. So yes. the, um, so it never felt like a negative. I felt like I was, I, I knew I was destined for it still regardless. That's great. So yeah, nine years old, 10 years old, I started doing musical theater, traveled the whole country, the United States, doing musical theater on a show. Landed in Los Angeles for like a month. We, we performed in Los Angeles. Michael Jackson even came to see our show. So I got to meet Michael Jackson. I have a Ooh, Michael Jackson autograph and everything. Flex. Yeah. <laughs> I still have it. And uh, while I was there, then agents came to that show and then they asked me to stay in Los, in Los Angeles. And so my mom and I, we decided to go back home to Maryland. I have two younger sisters to my dad. We packed back up. And a year later, maybe two years later, no, two years later, we came yeah. back to Los Angeles and Yeah, then we started, and I started off with acting. I wanted to be a singer, but I didn't know how to get in the music industry. I was just hoping that one day I was going to get discovered. Just be like walking down the street and someone say, you. And how did that end up then? I had a couple (laughs) you moments. That's exactly what happened. It's exactly what happened. I would be like in my apartment building. It's Hollywood. It's crazy. Hollywood really is like that. You get discovered all the time. And, you know, there were some music producers that had studios in their apartments there. And they were like, you want to record? They, Do you sing? And I'm like, yeah, I sing. 
And so I would, I would get up and I'd start singing like classical arias and Broadway songs. Yes. <laughs> which are not what they're looking for. <laughs> I'm like, tomorrow, tomorrow. You know what I mean? And they're like, okay, okay. Can you do a run? And I'm like, no, I can't go. You know, can't do Whitney Houston. But through much practice, going to the studio, you, you start making relationships, meeting people. And one person led to another, to another. One job led to another. And then by that time, I was like... 16, 17, I seeked like a real record label, a record deal, and um, and ended up, you know, meeting Jeff Fenster at Island F Jam, who was also responsible for Britney Spears when mm. he was at Jive, and I was like, this is perfect because I want to be like, I want to be a pop artist. Yeah, and the other day the you guy. talked about Britney. Did you meet her? I went on tour with her for a second. We went oh, on wow. tour overseas, like in Japan. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she was really nice. I mean, she's so talented. Yeah. So yeah, it was a really good time to be. In. I went on tour with her. I went on tour for a long time with NSYNC. Yeah. We had the same manager, Johnny Wright. So it was a really cool experience. The beginnings of my music career was like, pinch me. I can't yes. believe it. Yes. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah. I remember sitting there in front of the TV, watching MTV <laughs> and like uh, all the American good old superstars. Days. Uh -huh. AM to PM was like my favorite. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That's my first single. Yes. Um, and also like what I find very interesting now is like that all the fashion styles you were wearing there <laughs> are back now. They're right? Back. Gen Z is like. Yeah. Yeah. Wearing all of those yeah. styles. My mom, t I mean, my mom, my daughter tells me, she's like, Mom, you're a Y2K queen. You do know that, exactly. right? <laughs> exactly. How do you feel yeah. about that? Like that it's all, you know, coming back now. <laughs> Or I think it's cool. Yeah, I think it's it's really cool that it's there. As long as the fishtail G-string underwear thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm not going to do it. Maybe a Doja Cat, somebody else like that can do yeah, it. Yeah, they can do it. But it was fun when it lasted. I was like, this is fire. Yes. Um, but I do love seeing that, you know, I feel like now it's a mod podge, everything, all fashion, and like any kind of style is back. People are finding themselves through any era. But it is cool looking back at what I did wear and um, seeing it kind of reflect what's in now. Um, and also like having the respect of people being like, back then it was like, oh gosh, like I knew how to dress it and stuff, yeah. but it was so hard to get like, Not so hard. It just wasn't always the easiest getting a big designer, fashion designer yeah. to dress yeah, you. Yeah, it's different You had now, to like right? get those relationships. Yeah. Um, and now I'm like, oh wait, like I was cool. <laughs> and I did have cool clothes. And this was what the era was about. It wasn't about having, I mean, certain particular people were about fashion designers and being like, and mine was like, you're going to wear ripped pantyhose as a shirt and, you know, a cropped, you know, baby tee yeah. with some low rider jeans. And, and this is the style. And now even the de designers are doing it. So, um, so yeah, it was cool. My mom used to actually be my stylist. She styled me in a movie that I did called Love the Has a Thing. And like, people love that movie. Like there are videos going mm. viral of that these kind of styles you're wearing. Yeah, there. yeah. They like, like people love it now. Yeah, it's cool. And I still and have your mom those outfits. Styled it? My mom styled it. She like went. She That's was iconic. supposed to go to school for fashion, and because of me and my um, <laughs> being how I am, she had to help me out instead. But she was able to kind of live out that dream of styling through and like fashion through me and as well like my dancers and stuff. And yeah. then eventually even in movies. So yeah. yeah. So we have five looks from oh. your music videos. And I would like to, you to rank them from <laughs> one to five. Okay. We have Dip It Low, of course. Okay. Um, the Black Combo. Yes. Latex. Um, then we have When You Look At Me, first of all, the jeans look. Yes. And then the look with the white top and the, and the pink skirt. And the pink skirt. Yes. Or the hairstyle. Love it. Yep. Um, say I, the red jacket with a ponytail. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh huh. And then we also have from AM to PM the green look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm already going to put that on the last. Like, Which one? AM to PM green look. Less? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's going What? last. That's the, the, how many is that? Four looks? We're ranking that, that out, was of, five. out of five. So that's yep. number five. But I will say it's an iconic part. Like it's iconic as far as like remembering that's what that scene was. Yeah. And like yeah. that's what the times kind of like gave, you know. But I remember putting on that outfit and thinking that I look like the character in Barney. 
the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember wearing that, and I was like, I look like. But did, didn't you have any say in like what? I you... did, and yeah. I actually was okay with it at okay. the same time too. It's just not. It didn't feel like something I would ever wear Fear out. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like this is what a pop star wears when she's performing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it was pop star magic. That's what it Fear was. You. It was yeah. never anything you would ever wear on the yeah. street. So. Yeah, but I think, don't get me wrong, that might have been Patricia Field or something, which is a huge designer. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and, and the same time, I had an awesome stylist um, that she, Andrea, she was styling everybody from JLo to Gwen Stefani and everything. So I was like, she knows what she's doing. And on top of that, this is my first video and I want to be a pop star. And this is what pop stars wear. So, you know, but I liked all the other looks too. Personally, like I would wear the other look where I had like the denim skirt and the purple with the arms out um, yeah. in yeah. the video. So yeah. still got that look too. So yeah, so that's the green look is ranked at number five. Okay. Okay. Then we're going four, three, two, one. Okay. I'm going to give at number one spot, I would give it to, I think when you look at me. When you look at me, Which it's one? the denim look the or denim? the white. No, yeah. it would be the white and pink. Okay. So the white and pink is my favorite. Yeah. It's yeah. my favorite because it was giving rock star. It was giving pop girl. It was giving manga. It was like a little of everything. <laughs> and it was like girly and fun, but kind of like edgy. Yeah. Don't ask me why. I think it's the hair's edgy. The, and then yeah, you got the everybody hair. with the, exactly. you know what I mean? And I was, and it's all leg and I got these crazy heels on. So number one is when you look at me. The white and the pink. That was my moment. Second yeah. to that, I would give it to the denim look, which yeah. is in When You Look At Me. Yeah. It's kind of like side by side, to be honest with yeah. you. But I love that de all denim look. I love, I've always loved denim. And I, I loved the all denim look. It's like a bodysuit. And then, of course, I used to live for my low, low rider jeans. So yeah. it was like a good <laughs> low rider jean with a pointy heel. That's actually kind of at a tie. But I'm going to put it at number two to that other look. Then number three, I'm gonna go with dip it low. Yeah, the dip it low, the latex look. I mean, it just <laughs> matched. I'm I'm in paint and there's paint everywhere. I'm saying dip it low. Like I turned 21. I was like, I went from teen pop girl and like you know me from Disney to hello. Yes, I'm a grown. I'm a grown up. I can. I can do whatever I want. No, I'm just kidding. You know, I was, no, but I felt sexy and I was like, this is it matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was making fun of like myself just recently talking to a friend because I was like, you know, I was I was like 12 singing that song, like not understanding the lyrics <laughs> at all. Like, and like, Christina, what does Meet it him even at the mean? door with nothing on, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, pop your back out like it's broken. <laughs> I know a lot of people who were singing that song pretty yeah, early, yeah. but sometimes songs are just, it's literally just a good melody and it's exactly. so catchy. There's nothing exactly. you can do. Yeah. It was one of those songs <laughs> you just can't get away from it, no matter what age. And I'm happy it worked the way it did, even for all ages, yeah, yeah. considering the content. Um, so yeah, Dip It Low is number three, though it should be also number one, but I also like to compare things to something that I would almost wear. Like yeah, I feel yeah. like I could wear out. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I'd wear that out, but I would wear it maybe at night or something. Yeah. Or just in the dip below <laughs> video. And then four, I'll give it to um, the Say I video. I would say, you said with the red jacket. So that's the one I'm like in the yeah. laundry, like on the in, the in the hallway. Exactly. Yeah. So that one, yeah. I would give it number four. It's when kind of like my turn of being a little bit more urban pop, mm -hmm. um, sliding into that direction. And I thought it was fire too. So yeah. I like the colors, pop of color. And I felt really that person at yes. that time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's also so funny how the color grading of the video was. Yeah. You, like, very intense. Oh, yeah, such yeah. That was Ray K, and I love Ray K. And it's such, a, like, Dave, Ray K, Dave Myers, um, gosh, so all those people, all those guys that did my, my videos at that time, they... Uh, Ralston, um, they all had, I have a thing for color and for the way it popped. And that's what yeah. we really enjoyed watching videos. It had this, this drew, it drew you in. And I like things that like, you know, yeah. it makes your skin look good. Like yeah. a pop of yeah. those colors that are just kind of give you a golden look. Yeah. Talking kind of, of uh, Dip It Low, um, for the Germans here. <laughs> Hi, German. I love Germany. Do you know how much I went to Germany? 
Really? So I was in Germany so much. I would whenever I came to Europe, London and Germany were the two places I went every single time. Yeah, and like all the different places in Germany, and they've showed me so much love. Remember, and I even had a remix with Sammy Deluxe. That, that's what I wanted to uh, yeah? refer to because <laughs> I'm still like curious, like how did that come together? How did it come, come yeah, about? <laughs> because like we know Sammy from you know German rap music. Yeah. Um, but like, how did that, how did that come about? Yeah. So we had a whole plan when we did Dip It Low, we were yeah. like, we want this to work everywhere. Yeah. And, um, we love this song. It's, it's, it's a departure from just like pop girl Tina. And I've also done a song with Ja Rule. So we were like, okay, this makes sense. I can go do a pop song. And that was so the popular thing to do. Everybody was doing pop versus like hip hop artists, Ja Rule, all these different people, yeah. 50 Cent, you know, doing records with pop artists. Um, and so I had, on my Amer American version, I had Fabulous. And um, the label all decided, like, in each territory, we were going to find, you know, people that really stood out in that territory and have them do a feature. There's mm -hmm. a separate feature. And instead of having just the American feature go out everywhere. Yeah. And so we had Sammy Deluxe on the German feature. Did you did you meet for the video shoot then? We met when we did a performance, yeah. Oh, we met nice. when the yeah, when I came out and he did a performance yeah. with me. We did a couple different Oh yeah, he's in the video too. Yeah. Yeah, right. We do a video <laughs> there's a video version, yeah. And everybody kind of shot their own video version too. Like they would sing the song and then like on a green screen they added them in, in each ter territory. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. amazing. That's cool. Hi Sammy. Still <laughs> out there. There are also a lot Thank of you. other things uh, people don't know about you or might not you know, link you to that song. For example, Kim Possible, like oh. the, the little bit younger generation knows that song. They do now, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. everyone that's like in their 20s, yeah, they're like, TikTok. Oh God, yeah, Christina. Oh yeah. yeah, well they grew up with it. So you got the 20 year olds and even some of the 30 year olds because I'm beyond that now. <laughs> I, um, but Kim Possible was, ended up being like, that's part of even like one of my top, top, five to ten records on Spotify um, right yeah yes, yeah I never yes, imagined yes. I just like sang the song and I knew it was going to be for the cartoon yeah, Kim yeah. Possible but Kim Possible didn't exist so it was all fresh and new and yeah. Disney came to me I had a relationship with them and we just thought it would be a good idea to do you know to they 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 did a couple different records with different people uh that they all worked like uh doing jingles with people so yeah I did it and it ended up being like number one for weeks and weeks and weeks on like radio Disney yeah. and then like everybody had it as a ringtone and people still to this day sometimes I'll be somewhere in your hair did 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 it exactly did, did, did on somebody's phone would you phone. sing it for us <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I'm your basic average girl and I'm here to save the world you can't stop me cause I'm Kim Possible. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. I have a little rasp to my voice right now. I don't know what's happening. Love it. Yeah. And then you also did songwriting. Yes. For J Lo, yeah. for Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. You had some big songs. Anything yeah. else that is not on my mind right now? Uh, so Jennifer Lopez, I was able to write the song Play. Uh, Justin Bieber, I co wrote that as well. Uh, that song's called Baby. That was cool. Um, I did some songs for some artists that it was so early on, like some girl groups. Um, one was called PYT. P -Y -T, yeah, PYT. Um, I wrote some songs. Gosh, who else did I do? It wasn't only them. I have to think about it right now. We always just talk about the same ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Many more. Sometimes I have some reminders and I'm like, oh, yeah, I did that. What did you do with your yeah. like first big money you got? Ooh, I didn't touch it for a long time. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so the first time, yeah, so the first time I got big money was when I got my record deal. Yeah. And the main reason I really didn't touch it is because we were in such immense poverty at that time. We were so broke. We really didn't have a dollar to our name yeah. at that time. Um, my mom and I were, you know, she was doing temp jobs. I was babysitting. We were doing housekeeping for people, cleaning houses. Um, and still, like, it was tough to get by because at the time, my parents had gone through this divorce and it was just a rough patch for the, both of them. So it was my mom and I on our own with my sisters. And we were, like, you know, just skating by, uh, you know, eviction. Like, we, 
you know, you, you hit the eviction notice and then somehow the next day you managed to find like a hundred dollars on the floor. Like it was weird things would yeah. happen. Yeah. Or when we were always just like, get by, you know, we were, you know, get your ketchup from McDonald's, get your toilet paper there too. Like everything. Like we had <laughs> wow. nothing, no furniture, but, but we had family and we had friends that really supported us and made us feel like that was nothing. Like that didn't mean anything. And that yeah. we learned that and yeah. we learned that we could actually get by with nothing and be happy. So when I got my record deal, we were like, okay, it just sat there. We didn't know what to do with it. We didn't yeah. do anything yeah. at all with it. And when I finally decided I was going to do something is because we were driving. The day I went to get to actually sign my record deal, we had a, um, our car was a, what's, like a wagon. It was like a three-seater yeah, wagon. Yeah, like a van thing? Not a, not a van, but the car version, you know? Ah, okay. The one where the kids sit in the back and make Got faces you. at people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a tourist station wagon. Station wagon. And um, our car was so banged up because people would crash into us all the time. Oh, wow. But we couldn't afford to fix the car. Yeah. And, um, and so <laughs> the car, on our way to go sign my deal, we pushed the car to my, to my <gasps> attorney's office. And my mom and I laughed the whole time because we're like, <laughs> the way that this worked out, the fact that the, like, the car stopped in the middle of nowhere and there was smoke coming out of the hood of the, yeah. of the engine. Yeah. And it was like one of those moments that we were like, you, some people will cry off of this. We laughed. We were like, only this would happen to us. And we just had this humor about the poverty in our life and saying like, this is momentarily, this is, this is the moment. This yeah. is it. Like, yeah. we know this is momentary. We know that there's more out there and we know that we're happy and that we're also yeah. like, life is good. And so we laughed at what was happening in our lives because we knew that there was going to be a better day. We had big goals and we were very, I'm like very faithful and I pray all the time. Yeah. Um, so our spirituality kind of just outweighed all that. And then we had this money and we're like, what do we do? And we just sat there. So I finally got a car and it took me yes. about like, I think after I got my, my money from my record deal, it took about like, I think it was like five months later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we but that's really didn't so touch powerful. It. Like the fact that you laughed in that situation. And oh, I find like you are one of the most like positive people. Yeah. I ever got to know. I like, like to stay positive. I like yeah. like in life. I'm like, that's. I think that's when that's my nature. Uh, yeah. By way of just my family, what I've been taught, but also I think it's just within me too. But I think it's important uh, when you have this positivity about you. That means you always know that, that there's a positive outcome. Yeah. Even in something negative. You know, exactly. So that's what I always see in everything. Half glass full. I mean, glass half full yeah. instead of half empty. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, we laughed about a lot of things because we got our answers for the, for the negative things almost like overnight all the time. So yeah. we're like, you know, some of the hardest times we have the best memories. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 I also feel like working in this industry, like with artists, fashion, etc. There are a lot of moments where it's sometimes difficult because you have so many big opportunities in front of you and sometimes they got taken within like a minute. Oh yeah. Right. Uh -huh. And then you just sit there and you were so excited. And that's yeah. what I really am learning right now <laughs> because things just don't sometimes work out the way you want them to yeah. work out. Um, But then something else works out. Exactly. Then something else comes and then you think like, oh yeah, wow. that was the reason why I had to stay at home at this night, maybe, you exactly. know? Exactly. <laughs> no, it's yeah. true. It's yeah. so true. I just, my friend, uh, you know, sorry, I don't want to over talk <laughs> your head off. No, no. Okay. okay. <laughs> He sent me um, this clip of this <clears throat> movie. It's a, it's called Scary Movie. Um, and it's like a funny, it's like a, a, fun, a funny movie with like the Wayans brothers where they make fun of other, of scary movies. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie. I'll show it to you. But there's a clip of a scene of the movie and um, um, Regina Hall, which I love her so much is doing this whole scene and she's um and I told my friend I was like I was supposed to play that role and he's like no way I was like yep I had that whole scene I had that whole audition and so what happened in, in this movie they had a girlfriend and then they had a cousin and so I had I was the girlfriend and she was the cousin and Regina was already booked in the movie and um and I had actually booked the role of mm -hmm. the girlfriend mm -hmm. I had signed the contract and everything And then last mm -hmm. minute, just out of nowhere, before I was supposed to leave, and this is, by the way, when I was, it was either the choice to leave to Canada to go film this movie, or I was going to go to New York and go meet with Jeff Fenster to go sign my deal. Wow. And so I booked this job. So it was like, okay, we're going to postpone the music stuff, and I'm going to go, this is like my first big role, I'm going to go to Canada, and sign the contract, bag pack, 
got a phone call. They decided to condense both roles into one, like to make two characters into one character. Yeah. Oh. And they love Regina, so they're going to keep Regina and she's going to do that role. But guess what? You still get to get paid. So that was like one of the first times that was like, that <laughs> was, hilarious. I was broke. Like I told you, I was like broke. So we basically lived off of the money yeah. that was supposed to come from that job. Yeah. So I still got paid for the job. Didn't do it, but I still got paid. And then instead, That's how we, like we decided, <laughs> exactly, instead we decided, okay, well then let's go to New York and let's go see about, uh, let's go meet this guy, Jeff Fenster, and let's go meet these other people and see about getting this record deal. That's and so it mean. all worked, it's crazy how it worked out. Yeah. Because at that time, I told you, we had poverty, same time, I could have been like so upset about like, I booked this job and they literally like fired me before I even like got made, like left. Um, but no, I saw like the good in it. It was still something positive. And I didn't even have a guarantee that this record deal was going to work out or that I was yeah, going to get a record yeah. deal. But I believed in myself enough to know like, okay, we're, our journey is we're on our way. And God made sure that he provided so that we can hold on for a little while. So I was supposed to get paid like $20,000. Yeah. And that $20,000 to us at that time especially was like that lasted us. That's what I think lasted us until that's why I couldn't I didn't touch my yeah my yeah. record deal money yeah. because that lasted us a long time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you're here because of your mindset. That's Yeah, yeah. look at that. Look yeah. how it all works out. And then I ended up working with Regina later and I love her to <laughs> pieces. I was like, look at us now. I don't even know if she knows that story, but it's a, it's a cool story actually. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. But who is your um who's your most famous person in your phone? In my phone? Yeah. Ooh. Most famous? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Spill the tea. <laughs> Let me see. Who's my most famous? <laughs> you know, a lot of my most famous people, they probably changed their number by now. <laughs> I don't really Maybe, get, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, I'd say Eva Longoria. There you yeah. go. She's, she's, she's a big deal. Yeah. Um, I would say, who, who else? Hmm. No, don't have her number anymore. Oh, no, I do. But you know, this is probably an old number. She probably don't have this number. But you anymore. had it. So. The Riri. <gasps> That's one. Oh my God. There you go. Okay, I'm dying. <laughs> but I guarantee you, she probably changed this number. It's been a while. <laughs> we got Riri. Let's see. Do I have? Let me see. Okay, uh, I, I put it out here because, like, Riri is like. I love her. My goal to, you know, celebrity I want to shoot with and work oh, with. Yeah. Yeah. I so. love her. But you know what we do now? Like, forget phone numbers. We, like, DM each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Everyone just direct messages each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. meet people that way on DMs, and I also just feel like I just it's easier to just, like... I think sometimes even if somebody, like, hits me up out of the blue on uh, on my phone, and I'm like, so-and-so's hitting me up. I'm like, I'll go to the Instagram. I'm like, hey, yeah. did you just write to me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I have to, like, confirm there, because I feel like it's a little bit more legit. Like, you have... You have a little more security that way. So, yeah, I guess I can I can reach Riri on DMs. Mm, I can reach that, Kim Kardashian on the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like anybody's reachable. You never know. I've even met, you know, just like the average person just gives it a try and writes a message to somebody and you just exactly. never know if they're going to open it. I was listening to um, the latest album of Russ last year. Mm -hmm. And I was just posting about it on my story, you know, yeah. that I drove even a longer way to listen to the full album yeah. until the very last song. And I tagged him in my story. And when I was arriving at home, I saw that he followed me back. And oh. he saw it. He, I already knew, like, some of his team members, his videographer, for example. So yeah. he saw that we have, like, similar... Yeah, mutual friends. Mutual friends, yes. Uh, and then he followed me back and then... The last fashion week in Milan, he was also there in January and, you know, I could now text him easily. And that's when we ended up um, taking photos backstage. Yeah. So just take the chance and take a chance sometimes. Text I open up messages all the time, yeah. just like random. I just will have my moments. I'm just sitting yeah. there. I'm like, let me go through my, you know, not even the general because you could put people in general. But yeah. when people asked, you know, to send you a message. Yeah. And so I'm like, let me make sure I go through and. I just check out once in a blue moon who's been messaging me, see what they have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's worth it. Let's play a little this or that. <laughs> yeah, and let's let's uh, drink. <laughs> Hi. So the first one is music or acting. Um, for me now, I'd say acting. 
So there will never be new music coming. Ah, <laughs> never say never, maybe. I say never say never because you just never know. Yeah. Um, but I will say my passion for music and the music industry and where I was at that when I was in my earlier times doesn't feel the same as when I was younger. Yeah. Um, might be due to just, you know, my life. I've got kids. Um, I like to be there for my kids and I think it gives them a sense of security that you know, when I'm not working on a film or something, I'm able to come back home to them. Whereas with music, yeah. I think you're constantly on the go. And so I feel like you really have to love it to be able to make those type of sacrifices. Like, yeah. And yeah. I used to have that feeling. And now, now I'm like, ah, uh, I just, also the industry scares me. I don't really know, like, how do you know how many albums you sell? How many, how do you know how many singles? How do you make money? Like, what do you do? Like, yeah. it's so confusing. Um, yes. so I like film. I love becoming different characters. It's so much fun to me. I love doing movies. I love, it's a challenge. Um, I w want to be better every time. I want to, uh, just kind of like, I like to kind of let go and just become something that I'm not. Um, and I like also just the work schedule, the profession, like professionality of it, like show up to work on time. You're there, you know, 12, 14 hours. Sometimes it can be 16. Who knows what, you know, you're working on. But uh, I like the end results, and it's just, it's still fun for me. Yeah. 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 So acting first. As we're talking about acting, <laughs> yeah. I was watching that one movie of yours, the one Resort to Love. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and then I saw on TikTok that they had like this one clip. <laughs> Which one? Is it me where like you're, where you're crying, singing? singing. I had this one. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> Oh my gosh. Woo! <laughs> See this. This is why I love it. I love coming out. I would never do that in real yeah. life. <laughs> I was wondering, how did you get the the your voice so cracked up like so Oh that's of natural. Maybe that's, that's natural. why I don't okay. sing anymore. <laughs> Okay, no, no, it. you know, with the character, I knew she's like crying. She's like uh, that part. I can always fake like I'm like I can't sing. Um, that's easy. Uh, faking like I can sing sometimes is hard too. <laughs> <laughs> that's more difficult. Uh, but that was it. Was just fun. I just I, I the director just told me to just do what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And in my head, you want to have like some kind of control about what you do. And I was like, something like that, you just got to let go and just be so stupid about it. And I just remember the scenes like in Wedding Singer with Adam Sandler and some of my favorite, like Will, uh, Will Ferrell, like some of those actors, they just have this thing where they just let go and you yeah. get the best thing, like yeah. the best yeah. out of them. Yeah. So I love when a director can do that. Um, and I've had a couple just like him and there's uh, the director for that one, Stephen and as well, Roger Cumble for falling in love. I just like gave me some moments where as an actor, it's just become so much fun. Yeah. Because they just let you just space out. Just be you, right? <laughs> just be me and me who's like, like a kid again. Yeah. It's like yeah. the kid that remembers playing with my sisters and acting out whatever character I was becoming, we were becoming with our Barbie dolls and all that stuff. Morning person or night owl? Ooh, am I AM or PM? I used to be PM, mm -hmm. but I still am up late. I'm not saying like, but I get more done and I like doing stuff more AM now. I used to be yeah. totally PM. Yeah, I was like, same. I'm going to be in the studio. I'm singing at PM. I'm going out. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Now, yes, you might catch me. Uh, I, I will be up late, but I'm probably at home from 6.30 on. Yeah. 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 But was it hard? Because I, I found it very hard. Uh, I'm an idol as well. Yeah. But I want to be more like a morning person. But yeah. for me, it's, I don't know, hard to transition. Is so, it? Yeah. Well, when you get like me and you have no choice, you have like kids yeah, like, going exactly. to school yeah. early in the morning. That's, right. that's the main reason. Yeah. That's my yeah. main reason I'm up at 645. I'm like, I got to wake my daughter up. Then she's got to get ready for school. And then sometimes I walk her to, to school or something like that just so we have our moments together. But then I'm kind of up. I have this choice. I have this yeah. middle ground where I'm like, do I go back to sleep? No, that's but then I feel guilty, and I actually, choice. if I yeah. do go to sleep, I feel more tired. Exactly. So um, I usually just have like some coffee, catch up on my yeah. Instagram, yeah. or yeah. maybe yeah. go work out early. Yes. But yeah, my day just starts going, and then I'm I pr I'm pretty much up maybe like 19 hours of my day. Um, Instagram or TikTok or Snapchat because I know you're like I'm on you Snapchat. Like, yeah, yeah. Like Snapchat. I've been snapping a lot. Girl. 
I feel like Snapchat is kind of fun. I feel like I have a separate little world over there in Snapchat. Um, I used to snap a lot, and then I started doing it again, like in mm-hmm. de- November, December. Yeah. Um, because I like watching like the videos. They have like these videos. I like watching my friends' lives, but then like stories. I like watching the stories that they show, and they, like kid fail videos and things like that. <laughs> really corny stuff. <laughs> it's like my secret world. <laughs> Um, but I do love Instagram, especially because I share a lot of like, I have group chats with my sisters mm-hmm. yeah. and we send a lot of memes to each other all day. So yes. we're just like finding things and sending things to each other all the time. Um, do you and also then, find memes of yourself? I don't often find memes of okay. myself. No. That's good though. Uh-uh. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> Not yet. <sighs> so New yeah. New York mm-hmm. or Le- Los Angeles? Oh, New York or LA? My heart is still in LA, just my because my mom and my <laughs> sisters are there. Yeah. But I love New York. I love the energy of New York. Now, if we're talking about New York in the fall and the spring, New York in the springtime yeah. is yeah. cute, and same as and September is really cute there too. But I've never really like stayed long term. So yeah, I'm talking your head off. LA. Okay. Okay. I guess. Sneakers or heels? Sneakers. Like we're- <laughs> Sneaker life. Yeah. Oh, amazing. I love sneakers. Good Save my feet. <laughs> Cooking at home or dining out? I love to cook at home. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I'm um, I'm a cereal, like, I'm frugal also, by the way, because of my history. <laughs> so I like <laughs> to save money. And I also like to have fresh food. Yeah. And w- if it comes to, like, takeout and carry out, like, I don't think the f- food tastes the same. It's not worth it. Um, but I do love <laughs> going to really nice restaurants with my husband. He always finds great chefs. Yeah. And we go to like really cool restaurants and he finds really special mom- like experiences. Yeah. yeah. So those I would probably put at like, yeah, that's definitely a top thing. But it's not, it's an occasion compared to my everyday. I would rather cook at home. Okay. That's nice. Comedy or drama? Comedy. Yeah. That's more your character as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going to put a comedy on. Yeah, for sure. Vintage style or modern chic? Ooh. Um, hmm. What's vintage now? Is it Y2K? <laughs> that's a good question. That's a very good Everything question. Everything is vintage now. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to go with vintage. Yeah. Because, you know, classic modern chic right now would give anything to have a vintage bag. <laughs> That's to have so some true. vintage shoes on. Yeah. Um, no, but I think I think there's something about worn kind of clothing. I actually love going thrift shopping mm-hmm. and kind that's of putting amazing. a new a new flavor on something that's yeah. old and vintage. Yeah. So I'd say vintage for sure. Nice. Yeah. Love that. Europe or USA? I know it's difficult, but Ooh. you know you move here. It's actually here, not that so... difficult these days. I love Europe. Yeah. Sorry, USA. I love you guys too. <laughs> I'm sure you understand. Quick. They understand. <laughs> I guarantee you. But I really love Europe. I love I love the history. It's rich in culture. I love the food. I love uh, getting around on by foot. I love the city life. I love the countryside. I love the speeches. So much to offer and everything is so close. So yeah. Yeah, Europe it is. Yeah. That's what I really now start appreciating more and more yeah. as I go more often to the US. Yeah. And then like coming back. I really feel like I miss the European and li- yeah. European lifestyle a little bit more. Yeah. <clears throat> there was this and uh, this or that. <clears throat> so you're having the same thing in your voice. Too. Me too. <laughs> what do you think that is? I don't know. <laughs> is there like a humidity? I think there's a humidity in the air. Yeah, it could be. It might okay, be a little mute, humid down here. <laughs> so you worked in the music industry for a long time. Was there any point where you were like? I don't want to be an artist anymore. I want to jump more on like the business side, as I know you're now more yeah. of a businesswoman. Uh-huh. Um, was there like a specific point where you were like, okay, now I- I'm done with that industry because you know it's sometimes it's hard, yeah, <laughs> and it challenged you a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so for me, I think I just it just slowly. F- Uh, like the love dissipated but it was because my love for my daughter she kind of like just like overshined what that love was for music Um, because I know she needed me Um, I don't think that there was a thing that said like stop it like oh my gosh I can't stand this or somebody did something to me or something I even got dropped from my label I had some crazy times that happened in the the height of my music career that could have really made me say like screw this, I'm not doing this, yeah. or screw everybody, you know? <laughs> Sorry yep. for the middle fingers, but 
it could have been that. Yeah. Um, but I didn't shy away from it because I was like, this is just, it's a messed up industry, but I don't know why some of those things are happening, but I still love <clears> music. <throat> and I kept going to the studio, I kept making music. Um, but um, yeah, I can't say there was a thing, but I, that, but there's a thing to me now that I just feel like it's not the right fit for yeah. me. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. So when I look back at some of those things as in hindsight now, mm -hmm. I could definitely understand. My mom worked with me at that time, and I can understand why she would say some of the things that she said. Like she thought earlier on that you know maybe I should stop the music industry because she saw there was a lot of there's a lot that hides in the dark yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as a grown woman, she could see it, and as the mom, that everyone wants to take me away from that protector. Um, but she was, I loved having my mom with me. So don't get me wrong. She was like a protector, but she was like the coolest person to have around. <laughs> but you know, when you don't have always the, the best people with good intentions, you can understand yeah. why it's difficult for them to deal with somebody who's also like a, a good guard for me. Yeah. Um, and now when I think about when she was like, you don't need to be in this industry because it's like this, it's like that. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I get it now. Okay, if you ask me if my kids wanted to be in this industry, in the music industry, mm -hmm. me saying that I, with what I just said, I still, if it was a passion for them and it's yeah. something that they would want to do, under especially uh, both their father and I, her father's in a very healthy relationship with the music industry, oh, so it's amazing. great. Um, I would, I would, I would support them. Yeah, you know, I don't have bad memories or bad intentions, but I'm so happy that I had my guards uh, yes. around me to keep me in the right path. And I would help do the same thing for my kids if they ever wanted to do the same thing. Yeah. Do music. No, I totally yeah. feel that. Because it can be, you You know, like as a person who's not in that industry, you hear that often, you know, yeah. like they're shady people or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's kind of everywhere. It's, it's not everywhere. in just entertainment. It's exactly. so many industries. Yeah. So you always got to have your guard up. And as a woman, yeah. especially. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, but like as I'm, you know having all my experiences in the, in this industry as well. Yeah. Like I appreciate my friends who work in the same industry as I do so much more, even yeah. because they know what I'm going through sometimes yes. and that there is rejection, that there is like judgment yeah. or, and people from the outside, they just see like the one side yeah. of something uh -huh. and then they just judge and think oh, like, yeah, Oh yeah. yeah. Why doesn't she handle it like this or that? Everybody's you know? always like, I have a, you know, I have my company Beignet Box yeah. um, in LA and everyone's like, why aren't you franchised? Why aren't you this? How come you're not everywhere? How come you haven't moved? I'm like, you guys don't understand. It's a much more difficult process. Yeah. You're dealing with employees. You're dealing with business taxes, this, that, blah, 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 blah. It's not that easy. Any industry and even that, getting that on its feet, like that was hard for us even yeah. just to get, you know, to get that started. Um, and we had to do it on our own, but It's, it's, you know, any and every business, we all have such different stories and it all comes together in its own way. Sometimes we have to be our own investors, our yep. own <laughs> keep, you know, our own guard, like all those different things. It's like, so it's so precious. Life is so precious. You have to protect yourself, your business and understand patience. Patience is a virtue. It's one of the most beautiful things that you can have. Of course, there's people that it looks like something happened for them overnight, but there's a story for everybody. Yes. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to say that out loud. Like yeah. also with artists like Tyler, for example, everyone thinks like, oh, overnight success. No, no, she's probably but been doing it for a while. Huh? That's like, she's young, but yeah, still, but still. I'm sure she's been working at it for a long time. She, yeah. When I look at her, I feel like she probably like was one of those little girls that was watching, you know, pop artists like the head of her game that she was like, wow, yeah. I want to be that someday yeah. and was probably working on it. She's got a beautiful voice. She's talented. She can dance. Of course, she's gorgeous. So they're already going to be like, oh, she just yeah, got yeah, it yeah. overnight. But she's beautiful. But the talent follows with it. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. The perso personality, everything. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. when followers ask me like, oh, like, when did you start? And then I tell them like 18 years ago, I bought my first camera. Yeah. They're like, what? Like, and they're like, 18 or something oh yeah and they're so like oh, gosh, impatient, <laughs> right um yeah. and they think like they have to succeed like in Overnight. two years yeah 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 yeah. no and you got time exactly and you just never know your chapters always yeah. as you're just writing every single chapter in your life uh, well we we were saying the other day like things can change overnight in one yes. year like i've 
literally been from like in one year I've gotten married, had a baby before, like this is my previous life. <laughs> decades ago um but yeah like you just don't know what's gonna happen and a lot can change so quickly but um you just gotta stay what do they say persistent say persistent yeah yeah yeah, yeah. say persistent but patient i do believe in patience do you ever or did you ever have that moment where you felt like um there's so much pressure and like the whole mm. pursuing your career thing that you um lost a little bit of the love for it I think, oh gosh, did I? I don't know that I've lost the love for it, but but I there has been a time where uh, it was other things that got in the way. It was mostly like, but this was like before, when I was young, it mm -hmm. would be like a relationship. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so young. <laughs> and it would be like, huh, I'm just, you know, I'm so in love with this guy. And a relationship would kind of like, Overshadow and everything, just that. overshadow the yeah. focus of what I was doing, and I kind of really lagged. And then when you all of a sudden you open your eyes, you're like, wait, 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 where's this feeling again? You're like, you're losing <laughs> the wonder, that whole youthful feeling of, you know, of, you know, of what of what you love and that yeah. passion because you're so just like in love <laughs> and who you and are, then, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. I remember so. like getting out of a relationship and then being like. Oh yeah, that that's me, yeah, right? And yeah. then, like career-wise, it went up. Yeah. And yes. After. I was like, damn. damn so I got lost for a ended, second. Right? <laughs> <laughs> for a second, I was lost. Oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. that young love, it will get you, honey. You yeah. get lost for Be a second. <laughs> Be careful with young love. Yes. It's so, have balance. Balance is so important. It's so important. Yeah. Everything works its, its way out. Like you know, obviously, yeah. here we are yeah. today. But I'll tell you, sometimes you kind of, kind of. You're on their path, and then all of a sudden you turn left, and then you have to work your way back all the way back over again. But it, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Just don't get too lost. Yeah. 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 Would there be uh, one advice you would give your younger self mm. that's like the main thing? The main thing <laughs> as the main thing? Um, first, uh, gosh, now that we're just talking about that. <laughs> I just want to say to my younger self, oh gosh, you know, it's always been good. I would get, I would get nervous. I think, oh, oh, I know what I would tell my younger self. It's not too late. It's not too late to take a dance class and get and become a dancer. It's not too late to uh, take acting classes like courses. I always felt at even at seventeen. 19, 20, even 14 years old, I would go to a dance class. Let's just say mm -hmm. I wanted to, I decided I want to take a dance class, but I would go to the class and I realized these people have been doing dancing since they were like seven years old and it was so intimidating to me that yeah. I felt it was too late for me to try now. Yeah. So I would like to tell my younger self, it's not too late to become that or to become what you want and to just go through the process. It's okay. Take the classes. Be the worst one in the room. But eventually, you'll get better and you can become what you want to be. Um, and it's never too late to do Even now, like I tell myself that now. If I want to do something, I want to direct, okay, I can go to school. It's not too late to go back to school. Yeah. I'm learning Spanish and French now. <laughs> I, for years, was afraid to take classes, to take courses. I was just so comfortable with the idea that I just wasn't good at learning a language. Yeah. And I finally told myself a year ago, like, okay, it's time to challenge yourself. It's never too late to challenge yourself. Yes, it's intimidating and it's scary. Yes. But work on it. Work on it. So that five years from now, you're not saying, I should have done it five years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I meet people who are like 30 and they're like, Oh, like I envy you that you yeah. found your career path. And yeah. first of all, I don't know like what happens within the next five years. Yeah. I'm also changing and also my priorities change. Mm -hmm. But I find it so sad that people are standing there and think like, okay, life is, is over it. with like 30. <laughs> like guys, you have like 70 years or something or yeah. 60 maybe. Yeah. Um, so do something with it yes. and envying something. I... Um, try to 
take away the 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 negative negative meaning of that mm -hmm. because I found like when when I envy someone yeah then I think like okay that's like just that. like a sign of my body of yeah. my brain that I want something yes. but I can get it yeah you know yeah I just have to work for it and it's uncomfortable sometimes yeah it is <laughs> but yeah yeah no that's true whether it's like yeah I think we all have those natural thoughts. You'll see something and you'll be like, that could be me or yeah, I could have done exactly. that too. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, wait, but I, 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 did I really work on that? <laughs> and that's not my story. That's meant for that person too. Um, but like, yeah, like what you're saying. Because like watching somebody perform, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh, I could be a better performer. But I, did I actually try to go to exactly. like dance classes other than just taking rehearsals and learning from my craft? <laughs> I mean, learning from my career, no, I just did what I did for my job. But if I wanted to be that much better, I really could have gone to dance classes. I, I, I keep talking about dance classes, but that was like my thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I would see people that could dance. And in my mind, I, I would love to be like a natural freestyle dancer. Yeah, oh my God. Not I like a like, give so me much. one and two and three and four. Like I want to freestyle. <laughs> I really do. I still probably, I think I want to still do that. You know and, what? what? <laughs> like hip hop dance class is something in my head that I wanted to do like secretly since yeah. I'm young, but yeah. I never went. Uh -huh. But last year I went with my friend Martina to one dance class yeah. um, in November. I wasn't too bad, okay. but you know, I started, it was like the first step, but it was like, yeah, I had like a fear in me like, okay, I, I'm gonna look so bad yeah. <laughs> doing yeah. that. Or when they ask you to go up front and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't wanna dance in front of people. Yes. I wanna be in the back of the room. And yes. learn my and learn and I'm a slow learner too. So. But how did you find like learning choreographies? Like was that like natural to you no. or I find it so hard? It was tough. Yeah. It was tough. I'm a little bit slower than everybody usually uh, that's in a room because <laughs> I process things as I yeah. go. I'm not just like a give me the moves and I'm like, okay, I just like I'm processing what it looks like, yeah. putting it together. So maybe that's what my brain's doing. And I'm trying to like be a sponge and keep it in there. Yeah. Um but you know, when I was with Johnny Wright, um, my first dance classes were for a performance, my first ever performance. And he put me in a room with uh, Brian Friedman, who was Britney Spears choreographer. <laughs> okay. And it was like a month of just <laughs> training you. of like movement, movement, throw myself on the floor, I do this, that. <laughs> and I watch the videos now and it's so funny. It's so funny. I still <laughs> look very, very average. But um, but I loved it. No, but like it was good. If you if I watch your videos, like I would never think like that. I got better with time. I performed enough that your body moves enough and you loosen up and you're having yeah. fun. But I was do I was good at learning choreography, mm -hmm. but not okay. necessarily like being the choreographer. Yeah. Yeah. How is it with children and career? How did yeah. you find that very challenging or is it something you say like everyone can do it? Or uh, no, I think it really depends on your I, I hope that everyone can do it. I do believe that there's a way, depending. Um, but I do. I don't. I know it's difficult. Um, yeah. But luckily, I have a very supportive husband. The both of us have our careers, but we like root for each other. We make anything happen for each other so that we can do what we love and be parents because we know we understand balance. That's a balance yeah. for us. Yeah. And um, so even me, I'm about to go shoot a series in July mm -hmm. until the end of November. Um, called Dexter Original Sin at Society. And uh, we've already figured out our plan, like who's coming, when, for how long, we've got school, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so we've made it work where, you know, our families help out. There's a nanny. Um, we travel with the kids to make sure that we see each other within a few weeks. Yeah. And it is difficult to be away from the kids for a certain period of time. Like, I'm going to miss them for yes. sure. Yes, yes. But the good thing is, while I'm there on my own, I can focus on my character, uh, focus on, you know, getting to know my my team that I'm working with, and uh, hopefully it will reflect on, on camera. Yeah. So yeah. the, how long will you be filming? Like months and months? It's a couple months. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for now, it's from July until the end of November. So that's July, August, September, October, November. Five, five months. Yeah. yeah. Five months. Yeah. And I'll probably see them in that time, maybe two different big trips yeah it'll yeah. be enough time yeah yeah so you also built a little like of a french community here yeah, right i have i love yeah yes, my people here that's so cute yeah. how was it 
I saw you were on The Voice Surprising Mac. Oh, it's it called one. Le Boite de Secrets. It's the box of ah. secrets. Oh, okay. Sorry. Ah. I... It's okay. He's done stuff on The Voice. He's like a okay, voice okay. guy. Um, yeah, I surprised him on How the show. How was that? Being on stage was, again, oh, singing. Gosh, I was so nervous. I was so, I was nervous. I it was, was almost a cappella, wasn't it? It like, was like a cappella. It was with a guitar. Yeah. Um, I was more nervous because I was surprising him. I had seen him all day. I'd seen him all <laughs> week. And yeah. like, I was acting really normal. And I had to like go behind his back and like, sneak off i had to call a nanny so he didn't know that i wasn't going to be home this whole thing that was the more stressful part than anything mm -hmm. and then then came the performance and i was kind of nervous because like you i'm looking in his eyes and it's like i haven't sung on television in yeah. so long <laughs> oh man but it ended up being a really kind of raw nice moment overrated underrated oh social media influence uh overrated or underrated yeah Ooh, I don't know what to say with that one. I guess, I mean, it's overrated because, you know, everybody just, it's just <laughs> like, I don't know. Everyone is an influence. <laughs> yeah. And it's okay. It's okay. We all have a certain influence. We have small audiences, big audiences, everything. But I think it could be like, like chill out a little bit. It's okay. I do it. I honestly, I film it. I, I, my camera is full. Yeah, of videos and everything because I love filming life. But I've always been like that even before like social media. Yeah, I used to have photo albums and scrapbooks, and I just was loved filming things and taking pictures, and that's why I have so many of them now. I look back on my DVs and my printed pictures and stuff because I just enjoyed capturing memories. So I think it's hard to say whether it's overrated. It's it's because it's, it's like <laughs> it's like people love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm not mad at it at all. I don't I'm not hating on it. Yeah. We're back at vintage fashion. <laughs> Whatever oh, that is in Georgia. Uh-huh. Is that overrated or underrated? Because it's so hyped right now. Is it? Oh, I think it's it's always gonna be underrated. I think it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love vintage. Luxury brands. Ah uh, that I are mean, also super hyped and I yep. think some of the things are so hyped, but they're like, like some of them, some like brands like make fun of the fact that people, the overrated part of it. Yeah. And they're making fun of you and people are buying it. Yeah. And they're, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I, you're going to wear it <laughs> and you're going to spend thousands exactly. of dollars. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's I like think. It's like a joke. <laughs> right? Sometimes yeah. I think someone sits there behind a wall thinking like, oh, you just spent like 5,000 euros on that bag. Yeah, <laughs> ah, I think every now and then, <laughs> but I'm not mad here. at it. Something, yeah. I mean, I I love to save money, so when I choose something, it's because I want it for the long run, and I want it to yeah. be something that's classic for a long time. So I am a serial like I'm a I'm a window shopper because that's if good. I bought every single designer thing that they're selling me or wanted to be like everybody else, then I'd be broke. <laughs> yeah, but that also comes with social media that people who don't have the money just buy stuff to yeah. show off. Yeah. Go vintage. There you go. Yes. You can still, I, I respect people that can and do wear, like I see, I admire them. I'm like, oh, I wish I could dress like that. I wish I did that. I wish I would actually went into the store and bought that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so don't get me wrong. If I, I, I could, but I just don't. Yeah. And I just choose to spend my money in other ways. But I have my pieces that I yeah. think are worth it. Self-care routines. Oh, I'm all for it. Yes. Is that underrated? Do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. I know you Enjoy have all your yourself. Like, you know, I love it. Go yeah. for it. They're skincare. not overrated. Take care. Like not just skincare, but like self-care. Like I love any yeah. kind of self-care thing. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth your time for one hour of your time. Go for it. Like you're going to feel good about it afterwards unless you go to somebody terrible and you're like, oh my yeah. gosh, like they ruined my skin, this, that, I shouldn't have done it. But that doesn't happen all the time. Pick good people. Try to choose the right things. And um, I think if your our days are so hectic these days, to just give yourself a little piece of time is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I feel that. I really had to learn that because like two or three years ago, I was just hustling every day yeah. and I didn't take time off. Yes. And I, at one point, my body was just like, no. No, your body will tell you. Yeah. yeah. Get yourself I got a massage. A yeah. Yeah, get a massage, do a drainage massage. All that stuff works. It yeah. does. And yeah. Treat your body good. AI. I'm for it. 
<laughs> um, I mean, we're just, it's there. It's going to have, I don't use it all the time though, yeah. but I'm for it because I know that this is where everything is going. I know that it can help. Um, I do miss the traditional way of like, you know, doing your research. <laughs> <laughs> but what are we going to do? You got Google. like kid, uh, For my kids, I wish that they had the traditional ways of learning, of like going to the library, doing the way that I had to learn. But it just is what it is. You have to adjust. But I do hope that they absorb something. I really hope that people can fall, don't fall so far left into getting lazy that they yeah. don't do the work. Um, I think AI is there to help, um, help you, help you, but mm -hmm. not there to take over your role. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as much as I'm like, oh, it's underrated. I don't know if we would call it overrated or underrated. I really don't use it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm also kind of like, what am I going to do? And, and I just want to figure out how I can make it work to the best of my ability when it's time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tricky topic. It is really. It has so many pros tricky. and cons. And yeah. Like, and there's so many different ways that it's used. It's like, what are you using it for? Yeah. 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 Um, digital detox. Oh, I think digital detox is good. Is good. Um, so it's, it's underrated. underrated. It's underrated. Yeah. Underrated, we could use a little more of that. Are you able to get off your phone for like uh, like a day or two like straight? I haven't done it. It's yeah. like not been like a choice <laughs> thing that I've done. But I also can go without... People would think that even though I post something on Instagram that I'm on there all day, I'm not on there all day. Yeah. I literally, like I'll post what I have to do. And then in the middle of the night, I look at what my memes, my sisters send me for like an hour or two, <laughs> maybe a little too late at night. Um, but I do think that it's underrated and it could use a little more of that. I, I haven't tried it. Maybe I'll do it one day. Yeah. <laughs> Last one is old school hip hop. Oh, it's underrated. It's great. Right. It's life. It's what we love now. I think I, I hate reading if saying if it's overrated, but it's underrated. But I, I mean, that's my time. That's the best uh, hip hop, if you ask me. <laughs> Did you ever meet Ashanti? She was also one of I my favorite. I love Ashanti. Favorite. Yes, yes, I've met Ashanti. We used, we kind of came out around the same. I was a, a little bit before her. Um, I think she even wrote one of the songs on one of my albums. And we all came from that, like, even with the Ja Rule. Yeah, like, I yeah. did a song with him before, and then she did a million songs with them. But she's so talented. Great writer. I yeah. love that she's still on the road. She's killing it. Yeah. So Ashanti is... Um, or was that, or is that, we were rating that, right? <laughs> that no, wasn't no, no, like, no, oh, no, okay. No, it was just like <laughs> a general question? question. Oh, yeah, we were talking about hip-hop. Old school, okay, old school yeah, hip-hop, yeah, yeah, or yeah, I'm yeah. B. No, yes. no, 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 she's killing it. Yeah. And, um, yes, I think if we want to call it old school R&B and, and, and hip-hop, I, I love uh, I love to hear it now. It's it's nice to have nostalgia. It makes yeah. you feel good. Yeah. I almost listen to it every day. Yeah, still. I'm not sure if I listen to a lot of the new stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that's my just, playlist is full of, like, Shanti. Alicia yeah. Keys. Me too. All of this. Oh yeah, stuff. that's the same thing with me. All my my first whole CD pack was all full of like it was actually all hip hop and I yeah. had like a couple like TLC and Missy Elliott. Oh yeah. Aaliyah, anybody that was Island Def Jam, Jay Z, all those people, DMX, like everybody's album I had it memorized and that's I still have that big old CD case with all those CDs. Would there be anyone you would love to do like a? like collaboration with if you would do if I was still doing music yeah <laughs> that was cool <laughs> you gotta be cool like I'm like oh I want to do a song with so and so but I'm so not cool I don't think they want to be around me you're like the coolest there's a cool version of what cool is now I'm not cool but like if it's I was an artist right now I'd be like I want to do a song with Doja Cat oh she's she's just like 500 meters from us I'm gonna knock on her right? door I'm gonna see if she yeah. thinks I'm cool Doja Cat <laughs> <laughs> gonna say but no. how would that song be? That I would don't be know. very It'd interesting. It'd be like Dip It Low remix or something. Okay, we want the Dip It Low I remix. Said what I said Dip It Low. Take it out <laughs> with Doja Cat. Here we go. <laughs> Please. Actually, I prefer AM the PM because I wrote that song. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> oh my god, that would be hilarious. <laughs> so, what's next for you? Next up on uh, the horizon, I've got I got a movie coming out on Netflix. Uh, it's called Meet Me Next Christmas. That'll be out in like November. I have also a collaboration, like a capsule collection that I did with Oceanus. We just did a photo shoot. Yes. 
Yeah, so we just did a photo shoot. Exactly. It's a capsule collection that I did of luxury brand um, swimwear and dresses, all hand beaded, and it's we're just throwing out pieces incredible. like every couple like every couple weeks. It is right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, like Thank the you. dresses I was holding in, and it's like so heavy They're and heavy. It's all and it's they art. do it by hand. Yeah. It's crazy what they can do. So um, it's exciting. That's one of my, I'm like, it's an exciting collaboration. So I'm happy about that. So please check it out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's it. And life. <laughs> and then lifing. Life. life is lifing. Will you go to any other shows during Fashion Week? Uh, I got invited to some couture shows this week, but I don't know if I'm going to go. There's like a Chloe event tonight. I could told you. Mm. Not really my thing. I think I'm done. I think I went, I went to like the top, top. That Vogue 100 yeah. was pretty darn cool. Um, but I've got like a week and a half left or two before I go back to LA. And I think I'd rather cook yeah. croissants and eat at home and watch yeah, Instagram nice and see where everybody went and dressed and what. I hate I the stress. You know what? Like that really inspires me that you're so chilled oh. with the stuff, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. But you like come here to do that. So it's great. You're like on the go the whole time. And yes. you're young. But also like when I look back, my first fashion week, I was like chasing, like I wanted to go to every <laughs> show, right? And now I'm like, okay, so yeah. now you have to chill. Because um, I also got like for the the past like two fashion weeks, it was... Uh, difficult for me to stay healthy, stay like, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just like calm, alerted, you yeah. know. My body was like, girl, that's not healthy for you. Yeah. What you're doing here, mm -hmm. like chasing everything, mm -hmm. um, not sleeping well. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. you don't so, sleep. Yeah. When you're chasing the parties here, there's party after party after party. You yeah. can be up all night and then you go again the next day. Exactly. And <laughs> then also for me, I would go to the show yeah. and then I would retouch until like maybe 1 a.m. Then oh I would gosh. go to an after party to do like connections oh and, gosh. you know, connect with people. Then going to bed at like six and then the next show starts at 10. And ah, Holy cow. there's like a whole circle. If you're going to do it, do it when you're young. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm done with it now. <laughs> yeah. You, put, you set sleep. the foundation. Now you know what's up. Yeah, yeah. I want my sleep now. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's how we met. Exactly. Right? That's what it <laughs> is. And that's how we met. So it's like you've set the foundation. Now you know your worth and your time is your worth. So you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show up to the right things. You you know, the right things. Yeah. Or, it, you know, it has to feel right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. That Thank was you, amazing. Ben. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, like let's do it again. You. It's so easy. I'm down. Hopefully we'll have some really cool things to talk about next yeah. time. All right. You know. ah, or we, do we call this... It's a wrap. <laughs> It's a wrap with Svenja. Yeah. Oh my God, Christina is singing for me. <laughs> We're both losing our voices, by the way. <laughs> Thank right. you. Bye guys. Bye guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well done. <laughs>